Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing our no shot run where we're not going to shoot a single uh, shot nor are we going to use explosives. It's melee and psionics only. It is time to do a supply raid. Um, an Eastern Europe Operation Stone Star is upon us. We do have 24 enemies with one enemy unknown that uh, most likely is going to be uh, the uh, Berserker Queen, but it could also be the Warlock. Normally the Warlock though doesn't show up on the Shadow Chamber. I've already pre-arranged uh, the team and Hogbite's going to lead it. Uh, we need a, a really A team for, for that uh, run. Divert here wears uh, the weapons of the Assassin. Roby has the nice little double axes. That's fantastic. Love it uh, so far, and we go in with two of our specialists. I've decided to only take one med kit because Sane already has one charge uh, by default, and that's plus four charges with the improved med kit um, medical protocol that we've uh, researched. We should be fine. I don't see any need for more than um, five charges overall. So let's get this one started. Forces Good, we just landed. We gotta get one supply area. crate at we least. Hopefully a little bit more. Locate and mark the crates with transponders. And fire brand wow, where rest. are the crates? Oh wow, that, that's far away. Gotta go uh, through all of the buildings and then to the other side. Holy moly, that's pretty far away. Moving to designated position. Well, we takes the point position and off we go. Let's just sprint all the way over there. Divert Roger follows that. and we're going to take the high ground. Got it. Quick feed moves Rolling in. Up. Sona so moves in it. and finally Hogbite moves in as well. So it is decided. Not much is going to happen as long as we're staying concealed. None of the timers will start. That's also why we're starting to move through the top of the building. Just seen that the ground has been shaken. Uh, that is either due to Andromedons or due to Sectopods. I hope the previous one and not the latter one because the last thing I need right now is to fight against the sector pod. That would be a rather unpleasant experience to say the least. Moving on target location. All right, Rovi moves over here. <clears throat> And let's move right next to the door. Hogbite can uh, move over. Oops. Can move over here. And all the way to that side. Running. Same moves over there. Quick feet. Moves the right to here. Getting it done. And so on moves to there. Again, no one jumps through the open window. Shh. I think I heard something. Very good. So far we're being undetected. Pretty sure that these guys will be like right underneath uh, the balcony. Let's open the door. Fantastic. Moving the designated coordinates. Trying to not get spotted out immediately. That would be a nice start with Bladestorm. But we've learned already that if you're starting with Bladestorm from concealment, that mutants in that very, very specific case can go, go, go. retaliate, and we wouldn't want that to happen, would we? 
By seeing the loss, uh, though, move, move, move. that would be a great opportunity for us to let both factions fight against one another. Double time. Yet another pack. As you direct. And there's even one more lost down here. Good. Well, good enough for now. Let's let them trigger one another. And we're hopefully going to profit from it. Pretty strong enemies. The mutants are still the bane of our existence here. I gotta hate them. Fantastic. They moved it right up. And probably the loss will die in one turn. So question being, uh, should we start engaging? The answer is probably yes, to be honest. Evert charges down. And there is no evasion against um, the blade of the assassin. Fantastic, that's a good hit. I am not concerned at all about uh, the loss. We got plenty of blade storm. Technically, I could theoretically um, activate the crate, but I'm not going to do that yet because uh, there is a good chance that it will be tagged and then we can still activate it. Combat protocol. I like the idea of softening up the mutant. Give Hogbite here an April call as well. I was hoping we could get a combat protocol going, but that apparently is not the case. Instead, we're just blocking the stairs. I'll keep the throwing X for now. And we're probably going to use a Mimic Beacon here. Let me think. Now nah, I do have an idea how, how we might be able to so uh, solve that puzzle here. This would be a hit. Oh wow, did that damage the crate? Okay, that's good to know. That is indeed very good to know. Never had the case where it was really destroying the crate. We do have replaceable well, 
Let's kill this guy. Hogbite still has actions left over. Could have given him one more uh, focus, but that's okay. Hogbite can pick it up. We were lucky and have gotten the focus for free. Pretty decent amount of damage to be honest. Fortunately, they are just too far apart from one another. 9 to 15 is actually quite good. The other option is really to just bolt him and keep most of our uh, keep most of our power. This mutant here will move up and will take two hits. Uh, difficult decision. This here will trigger <clears throat> momentum again. And plenty of extra... Plenty of extra um, focus right there. I would be moving all the way over here. We got one parry. So that means the mutant uh, will run into a parry from our side. And this here should take care. Oh, I, I wanted to mimic beacon, but we're going to be fine. Most of the threat is actually eliminated. What's over there? See, it's a little trap for the mutant if he moves in. That's a good chance that he will take two hits. That's one. To do something about that armor. That's the parry. The elders will sue me. We successfully set him up. We unfortunately also lost the crate. Not a perfect trait. All right, we need someone with a lot of movement. What's over there? Eva moves over. Right. I don't want to pull other packs, right? Moving down. Let's get this mutant. All right, we got an uh, one of one potential crate over here, but I would like to get a little bit more. This might trigger another pack, but I would be fine with it, to be honest. Slowly but surely reeling in all of the enemies. Yeah, we could definitely reach this crate, but 
I really would prefer okay, to I'll stay go. in cover for now. Blue moves all around. On the move. And what we can do is we can use conceal. Which will prevent us from triggering something else. Yeah, Roby can't move all the way there. Conceal would have been an option. Gotta let this crate go for now. And Sane might move up just a tiny bit. Could theoretically get the crate. Not sure if it's worth it. Probably not. Instead, let's get over here so that that uh, lost is not uh, hitting us. Yeah, and we don't need to get the crates yet. Like I said, we can wait one more turn. Today I learned uh, the arc wave of the Templar will actually destroy the crates. It's interesting to know. Could have guessed it. We're gonna have to move fast if we want to get the rest. I'm being flanked. Yeah, that's the shadow. Uh, the shadow bound that we've been waiting for. We're taking no. losses here. Wait. But he will not get away with that, no matter where he's going to run. We've got a hostile squad here. All right, fantastic. Yes. Got another set of enemies here. Fair enough. They, they, by the way, make perfect targets for the loss. And now things are starting to get uh, spicy when the losses are coming in. Quite a few of them. Well, look at you. Who would have guessed? Okay, cool. Well, before we kill him. Oh, wow. We could really make a move and get that guy. That would be fantastic. Still going to wait with the throwing axe, to be honest. So here we go. In with a katana, nice little hit. And that should take care of the specter. Plus, it will trigger untouchable, uh, inflatable, rather. Very good. That means we can get our prime spot right there back. Roby hopefully finally gets his promotion to major rank, but it was well deserved. Now. Let's get this party started, shall we? Aggressive movement in order to get the captain. 
Fortunately, a little bit of feedback. There is another pack that we might pull. Yep. Good. Just to double check, we have our Mimic Beacon here. Yep, that is what I was rooting for. Okay, and this here actually would be a pretty decent maneuver for th uh, to hit three. It's a chance of killing two of them. Play it safe, which looks, uh, which would look sort of as follows, and the team, uh, teamwork over. We can always throw another mimic beacon over there, which would be fantastic. I don't want to charge in even further. There might be another pack over here, so that does not seem like a super clever idea. Specifically since we're not yet uncovered. On the other hand, once we throw the Mimic Beacon, we are. And that's a bit of a problem. Could move to here, kill, get untouchable and sort of move to here they would barely be able to um, to get to us and we would get a bonus attack over there that's not a bad plan let's try it we might uh, trigger someone else but that wouldn't be the end of the world Untouchable and placeable. Moving right over here. I hope it's worth it. Okay, cool. Now back to the original idea. I fell in love with the idea of the iconic uh, ionic storm. Or iconic storm, as I would call it. And that's one down. So we're getting one focus back. The other two heavily, heavily injured. And... Just to make matters worse, let's place a nice little Mimic Beacon right there. So that everybody just moves in. And we're giving Hogbite an A protocol just in case. Okay, we're moving further towards this crate. Eventually going to get it. And Roby's waiting back here. The game is giving us back all of the focus that we were looking for. There's a nice little blade storm. Come on, I know that you want to move past him. Oh, careful one. I see where this is going. Well, 
The slaughtering has just begun. Haven't even seen the Berserk Queen yet. Nice one. Gotta love uh, the one blade. <laughs> he almost gets owned. That guy gets owned. Fantastic. Great comedy is Advent. Even loses against the loss. Okay, let's do something meaningful here. Moving up. Quick feed almost destroys this guy. And then it moves away because it burns. What a coincidence. That brings us to the option to mark this supply conveniently. Gotta get that supply up there. And one way of doing that is killing lost. Getting some nice little focus here and then simply moving up, right? Right. Not going to lose more crates. Fantastic. Okay, cool. So far, so good. I do not want to waste the school mine on this guy. Instead, a combat protocol will do. Should have probably moved to here just to guard that crate, but that's fine. Yeah, I don't want to move further in because I got the, the feeling that we're going to pull something. Oh, this guy here is not even alive. Are you sure? Yeah, that pretty much looks like a lost. There we go. Okay, so I got one. Okay, cool. How about moving back right, into your pri uh, previous position? That way, Bladestorm can take care of all of these guys. Zane is moving up, and just for shits and giggles. Let's use a protocol. <clears throat> I'll leave the healing on Sane for now. Roby charges in. Shouldn't have done that, by the way. That was a risky move. And it, of course, gets punished. That was a mistake. Very unfortunate. But it's fine, we got plenty of losts in the way, so... It's not like we are in trouble. It was just unnecessary, so to speak. Oh, really? Wrath Cannon? All right. Well, we got to deal with the Sectopod.
Because that is exactly what I was uh, waiting for the entire time. Finally, a sector. Like 5 armor, 6 armor, 50 hit points. And we bring a knife to a gunfight. Problems with Sector Pod is that their lightning field that they tend to use kind of works quite well against Templars. They take the full damage. One down. Firebrand is on deck for recovery. Keep marking those crates, Metis 1-5. Good. Big learning. You can play as safe and secure as you want. If you F it up afterwards, uh, they, that is really bad. Good. Moving in. I think we're going to give Rovi here an A protocol because he's going into the back line afterwards. I'd like to try to stun the sector pod for one round. That's fantastic. That way we really don't need to deal with him for now. Not sure if the Wrath Cannon though will be interrupted because it's kind of a delayed effect just like um, Blazing Pinions, right? Which sort of implies that once it's started there is really no going back. Yeah, and I think in this case we're just Gremlin healing ourselves. And yeah, we can continue by getting uh, already softening up that sector pod. I wouldn't want to waste Comet Protocol or anything else but the sector pod. Good. In the meantime, though, we got some decent mimic beacons over here, which is great. Now is the perfect time to start softening up the enemies. Nope, not yet. I think you're going to be the one throwing the Mimic Beacon. And since you ignore armor, I'm even considering sending you onto the sector pod, to be honest. This here will be a kill. Not an immediate one, but a delayed one. Unfortunately, he got stunned. Too bad. Okay, we're in deep poo poo, but uh, this is when good strategy works at its finest. Stun Lance is out for another round, thanks to a nice little proc, which means we're going for the Mac. There we go, that is good. Yeah, we could kill him. Probably the right thing to do. Sector port also needs some spanking. Implaceable. Let's move over here. That way the mech definitely will die. I'm 
And unfortunately, this guy here will not trigger Blade Storm. Nevertheless, I'll go here just in case he, for whatever reason, recovers. Lancer's fine. We really don't need the Mimic Beacon. And since we have Blade Storm, might as well start softening up the Sector Pod. It's only two damage, but okay for now. Every little bit of damage counts. Did I mention that I absolutely adore specialists for the ability of uh, dealing with those substantial threats? Nah. First miss. Moving down. Let's see if we can chain stun him. You can definitely see him, right? Yeah, okay. So for whatever reason, Haywire Protocol does not work. Apparently he still continues to be stunned for now. Let's amplify. This one here is going to be important. We gotta make sure that we're really hitting this nicely. All right. You will pay the price. Come on. Nice hit. By the way, six more uh, points of damage for the stun lancer there. That's fantastic. Oh, wow. 12 right points of damage. That's good. We can school mine, theoretically speaking, and probably also practically speaking. Won't be able to kill him this turn, so I am considering if it makes sense to just bum rush him. Amplification ends. Okay, fair enough. Don't have any combat protocol left over on neither of our specialists, elsewise we could kill it. And that's not enough. So what we're going to do is I put this here. That way Stun Lancer will move in and take a nice little shot. Even considering to just kill the Stun Lancer. For some extra intel, to be honest. Alright, that really didn't work out well. So... We're pussying out and hiding behind that car. In terms of aid protocol, let's give Roby an aid protocol. And the sector port hopefully dies. We have definitely clustered up on him, even gave up on two crates. Sector port is no longer shut down. Ah, I forgot the explosion. Yep, that sucked. What 
But what are you going to do? Those things are strong. Would have maybe gone in with only Hothbite and let the others ignore him. But that would have been risky as well. 3 to 4 points of damage is not going to matter too much. It's going to be a couple of days within within the map bay. Nothing completely crazy. Sane is moving over here just to secure that one. And how about... How about we're using a little bit more stealth? There you go. Oh, wait, that was already the end. Okay, cool. Well, not the cleanest of all missions. The sector part one was a bit uh, iffy. I will need to come up with a good strategy of how to deal with them. In the end fight, uh, they won't be a problem due to stasis, but I honestly wasn't really ready for them. The biggest mistake on the uh, of the mission was the move of Roby. That was just stupid. Uh, the rest was okay though. I was even thinking as I was moving Roby, that's a typical case of greed as I was doing it. Should I really do it or not? I could have just exactly double moved and that would have been it. The of these lost By the way, uh, the biggest injury here back. would be wounded for 11 days. Um, that's okay for now. Superior conditioning, good. I like it. And we got massive supplies. Pretty nice loot overall. Pretty nice loot. The sector pod is our research next is research target planned. because it will give us it will give us uh, the highest uh, um, gremlin uh, drones. And in terms of armory, let's just double check. Yeah, Sane is wounded and Quick Feet is wounded. We can live with that. No need to speed up the healing too much. Besides, whilst, whilst we are waiting for that, now seems to be like a good pause in general. Um, Hopbite could take a removal of his negative traits. And let's upgrade a bond. Not the worst of ideas. Good, we got some alien alloys uh, and crystals over here. Not necessarily what we need. I would rather like to build radio relays and then start expanding. We got plenty of intel. Good, let's start that building process. Fantastic domination. Uh, we're getting Inspire next. Such a good ability. Specifically, if you want to inspire Hogbite and in chasing down the Chosen. And we just got a nice uh, mission done into the fire. Infiltrate his stronghold is done. That also will give us additional covert. Um, uh, that will give us additional resistance orders. Got a scientist and a free promotion. Oh boy, that's a good one. Uh, plus one resistance contact isn't bad either. Touch plus ten, that is fantastic. Promotion right here. And that, of course, is good as well. I like the dodge plus ten, I must say. Q 
Giving it to Roby. Hmm. Making him a bit more tanky. Like seven days? Easy. Yeah, let's do that. Might be a little bit greedy, but who cares? I like the plus 10 dodge, and then we can always recruit the uh, scientist afterwards. There are plenty of promotion. We'll the Don't worry. Uh, there are plenty of promotion runs just to get us these extra levels, right? Renman here got a nice little promotion as well. Unfortunately, this guy is not going to see any action in uh, this episode. He just has the wrong class. Very sad to see it, but what can you do? Reading you loud and clear. More supplies, and let's make instant contact. Yes, please. That also gives us suit up. That means armor and vest projects uh, finish instantly, which means that our cores could be used for that. What else could we do? Spider suit or wrath suit. Is a wrath suit worth it? Let's think about it. Faster movement, we lose one um, item slot. Get a gravel hook, can pass through walls, get a little bit of dodge, get a little bit of movement. I mean, from a movement component, it's not a bad idea. I'm wondering, is it worth it? We got the serpent suit, which is one of these. Where would I put those? Probably onto the ranger. But then again, we do have that. Nah, we get the special suits, it's fine. Shadowkeeper not needed, Boldcaster not needed. Shadowkeeper gives crit though, uh, but unfortunately it's only available for the sniper. So not usable for us. Blue screen protocol will do jack shit for us. It's only for ammunition. Melee weapons unfortunately are unaffected. So it really boils down to armor only, right? Because everything else we can't use. There's a hazmat vest and there is a stasis vest. Okay, well, could be better, could be worse. It's not really a game changer. Yeah, on the other hand, we already got unstaffed engineers here. Might as well put them onto the power relays. Plenty of power left over commander now that we've built the shadow chamber we should be able to complete a more thorough analysis of the alien artifacts and data we've been in having. terms of engineering did we get our psi amp up no still lacking that one sector corpse can upgrade the serpent armor it's good Yeah, we don't need any of Tell the other better. items. Must have been pretty cushy working with Advent, living in the colony. Like most people, I wanted to believe that the aliens were legitimately interested in peace. Although they left me little choice when Good. it came to work. How about with we them? continue making contact? 160 into works for me. We located the Elder's Hunter, actively working in this region, Commander. And we don't have the 250 supplies, that is unfortunate. I would love to go to the black market. Avenger plotting new course. And then start building it. We got quite a few alloys and Elarium. Might want to scan for more. Archon Corpse, uh, yes, you're very welcome. Spectre Corpse, yes, you're very welcome. There you go. 
Yeah, we can wait with those. Superior agility, that's a good one. I like it. Um, let's buy it. And that's pretty much it. We don't need a sharpshooter. We don't need any of that. Let's just double check. In terms of superior agility. I like the uh, extra hit points here. It's not that they are going to have maximum dodge. Um, on the other hand, it's not too bad to build it into the Templar. She's not going to be as fast as Hogbite, but she's going to be pretty damn tanky uh, with a lot of dodge. Hogbite definitely needs more and Roby gets a bit uh, from the covert op section, so that's good. Who else needs plus three health? We got some advanced speed here. Normal conditioning, okay. Superior speed. You know, let's give him the superior conditioning. He will need it. Better than just one hit point. Okay, cool. Avenger We're going to scan course. for more Alarium and Alloys because it's a seldom spawn. We might want to do that. We're good on income now. And this is what we need to counter. High amount of, um, of robotic enemies. There is a sector pot again, so we get, get a chance to redeem ourselves. That one does not matter. And we don't need the sharpshooter. So yeah, it's definitely going to be lightning reflexes. That looks like a fantastic idea. 13 enemies suggest that we're probably going to run into either the chosen or or um, the Bursa Queen. Bond training needs to probably be cancelled. That's not going to happen now. And Hogbite needs to cancel his negative trade recovery. I hate to say it, buddy, but it's going to work. Going to go in with an A-team here. In terms of training, I think one of you is still missing Nullens, right? Get Galleon Poe here. There's a lot of the abilities, but not Nullens. You can see some of them are still locked and Nullens being one of them. So many abilities. That's why the class is, by the way, so incredibly powerful. You get uh, you got a massive slate of 12 abilities on top of an already strong uh, scaling class. So that's fantastic. Certainly helps to have additional combat intelligence on top of it. In terms of training center, where we end don't have much that we can train here. Nah, not really. Train. Uh, we've trained most of them. Yeah, we're still not getting a lot of AP. Enough to get by, but certainly not good. She's gifted, which is fantastic. But then again, we cannot shoot. So all her points go to waste. Hate to see it. Got a few majors now. Probably time to promote one of them to Colonel. And you know what I just realized? We already got another Templar, so Hawkbite wasn't particularly needed. We're going to take him into the mission. Um, because he is the better Templar, but 
I would soon start um, with missions without Hogbite. Which brings us to the end of today's episode. They are getting longer and longer. And I want to thank you for sticking so long with me on this interesting run. If you enjoy what you've seen, leave a comment and like down below. And see you in the next run. Bye bye, guys.